Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial video. In this video we'll be learning how to make a simple rope where we basically have a circle shape following a path, twisting around itself uh, like you can see on screen right now. So to start off with we're just going to go to File, New, General, Project. So we're just going to start off with a new clean project. So now I'm in a clean project, I'm going to press A to select everything, X to bring up my delete menu and then enter to confirm. So now I've got everything deleted. I'm going to go to Add, Mesh, Circle, then R to rotate, X to rotate along the X axis, and then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. At this point I can press 1 on my numpad to give me a side on view, and now we should have our circle like so. I'm going to press S to bring up our scale menu, and I'm just going to scale this down until it's really, really small. Again, I'm not going to give exact values, I'm just kind of eyeballing this, like so. So with our circle selected, we want to make sure that we now go into edit mode. So I'm going to press tab. We still have all of our vertices selected, so each of these little orange dots here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that this orange dot here is in the middle of our scene origin point. So by editing our position of our model uh, in edit mode, like so, um, keeping the origin point in the center of our scene, or 0, 0, 0, it means that we tend to start to do transformations or rotations in object mode. It will use this middle point here as the rotation rather than the middle of the shape itself. So I'm going to press G and then X to move it along. So G to bring up a move tool, G, uh, X to move it along the X axis. I'm going to move this dot here till it's in the middle of my origin point on my scene. I'm then going to press tab to return to object mode and I should now have my circle like so. So with my circle selected, I'm going to press Shift and D to duplicate, R to bring up our rotation tool, Z to rotate along the Z axis, and then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. Once I've done all this, I can hit Enter. And because I did all that using keyboard shortcuts, uh, it's basically recorded all those functions. So now when I press Shift and R to repeat, it will now repeat everything I've done to that shape and, and rotate it and duplicate it uh, along the middle point. So you should see something like you see on the screen right now. I'm just going to do it one more time until we have four circles all intersecting in the middle. So what we're going to have is this flower shape and we're going to have each of these circles rotating around each other to create our twisted rope effect. So I'm going to select all these circles, right click, join or control J until we have one shape. With that shape selected, I'm going to go over to our Modify panel, which is this indicated by this little uh, spanner here. I'm going to go to Add Modifier, and I'm going to add a Screw Modifier. At the moment, you should have something that looks like this, which is not what we want. It's currently rotating along the wrong axis. So I'm going to change the axis to be Y. So until we have this donut that looks like it's got a little indent in the middle, and what you'll find now is we have some values to uh, open to us. So we, at no point are we going to hit apply. As soon as we hit apply, we can no longer change anything. So bear that in mind. We're going to keep working on this. We're not going to hit apply. Uh, we can change the angle. We can change the screw. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to change the screw value here. So I'm just going to increase this to about five-ish, or maybe actually we'll increase it to seven, just to make it a bit more uh, tighter. Um, if I wanted to make these wraps uh, even tighter and make it more kind of um, braided, I can adjust my angle, so I can increase my angle value here, and the more I increase that, the more they twist around and get tightened to each other. But you will find you'll start to have this issue here where they start to intersect to each other. We can fix that by going over to our steps value and increasing that until we get a kind of smoothness going on like so. Our iterations here, if we use to increase our iteration value, this will basically duplicate um, what we, our original shape and duplicate as many times as the number of iterations we have for it. Now the maximum number of iterations you can have is 100, so we need to bear that in mind when we start creating our path for our rope to follow in this case. 
So what I quite like doing, or I find it easiest to do, is when I'm creating paths in Blender, is I find it easier to work along one axis. Uh, what I mean by that is, let me just give you an example. If I was to go to add curvature um, bezier like so, and just ignore what I'm doing at the moment, and I just add more points, I'm not kind of aiming to do anything with these at the moment, but by creating these points in this kind of view, it's very hard to work out whether this here is along this axis or it's actually down on the Z axis. So what I tend to do, let me just undo all that, so we're back to nothing. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to work on one axis at a time. So in this case, I'm gonna work on my ground axis first, on my ground plane, and then start working upwards onto my Y afterwards. So I'm going to use number seven on my numpad to give me my top down view. I'm gonna to get to add, curve, bezier. So this gives us this orange line here, this little curvature line here. With that selected, if I hit tab, we should have this sort of line with these arrows. So the arrows indicating the kind of direction that this path is following. And we have these two orange points with handles attached. So this is our start point here and this is our end point here of our path. And if we select one of these handles and hit something like G, we can move them around to adjust the position. So adjust the curve essentially. But you'll notice that as long as we don't move the middle point, the anchor essentially for that point, the shape or path doesn't move position. Um, so if I was to move that one around, it moves everything around. So we use our handles to adjust our curve. We use the middle point as our start and end points essentially, or our keyframes if you was looking at this in a video terminology. I can also hit R to rotate, like so. Then we just uh, rotate these around so we get a kind of curve like so. And if I wanted to add more points to my shape, I simply select my end point, I press E, and this will create, an, uh, it's basically extrudes or creates a duplicate. So this is creating a new point. And again, I can adjust the values of this. I can just, it's position using G and R to move and rotate accordingly. E to create another point. Rotate that around. And now I've done that, I've kind of got my path along my uh, ground plane. If I want to start working upwards, I would use numpad one or numpad three, depending on which view I want. I'd press E to add a new point. And now I can start working vertically. Like so. So at the moment our path is a bit too short, small, so I'm going to press A to select the entire path and then S to scale it up. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit, like so. So now we have this looping round, then it starts going up and zigzagging upwards, like so. And now I want to actually have this rope or circle following this path. So to do that, I need to go back to object mode or tab. I need to select my circle. I go back to the modify panel, add modifier, and I want to add a curve modifier. And down here where it says object, we currently have nothing in that box. If I click on it, we can select our path. So in this case, we have our Bezier curve. So this will now move it to the beginning of our path line. It's currently trying to deform it along the X axis, so it's not actually following the path at the moment. So to fix that, I'm gonna have the deform action, deformation axis be Z. And now you'll notice it's starting to follow our path. And I'll simply increase our iterations until it fills up the uh, pathway that I want it to follow. I can still affect the angle, so I can still decrease my angle if I wanted to. I can still increase or decrease the number of steps. Same with the render steps here. I can still increase or decrease the length of our screw. And all it does is copy that to every single one of our iterations, like so. And now we've got a kind of basic rope created. We could then start to apply materials to this. 
We could start looking at adding hair to it, we could to give that kind of fuzziness to it. Um, or we could use a similar technique to create pipes. The only difference would be when we're making our initial circle, we wouldn't be offsetting its position at the beginning, so we wouldn't be in edit mode and then moving it along. We'd be keeping the origin point in the middle of our scene and then basically having it extrude and follow our path instead of using our screw tool here. And again, if people are interested in seeing that, I can make a video on that. Just let me comment down below. And remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.